I do videos every single month talking about which seeds you can start based on that month. And in these videos, I always comment that it doesn't matter where you are, these rules apply to everybody. And the reason for that is because zones don't factor into seed starting times and what does factor in is technically the last frost date. But <laughs> with the advent of greenhouses and cold frames and mother nature doing her own thing sometimes, even microclimates from your front yard to your backyard, that last frost date actually may not apply to you. And if that is the case, then this video is for you because we're gonna go through all the different seeds and how to actually read the physical seed packets themselves to determine what your personal seed calendar looks like. Many of you know that there's a number on your seed packet and that is days to harvest. Now we'll talk about that here in a little bit, but that number is based on the number of units that can be accumulated. So growing degree units or GDDs, growing degree days, are a unit or a factor of measurement that people like agronomists, plant scientists, all used to determine when to do different things with the plant, such as when to start them, and even actually when to apply pesticides or herbicides because plants and bugs all play in the same world of GDUs. Now, while we don't have necessarily the technology and the gusto to be able to figure that out in our gardens, we do have a number on our seed packet that is days to harvest, such as this onion that has 110 days to harvest. We know that if I planted this today, it's not going to be ready in April. That is a given. So why does it say 100 days if it's not harvestable in 100 days? This number is not representing the day that the seed was started, physically put in the ground. It's not even referencing the day that it germinated. And what it is referencing is actually the date in which the plant has been placed in ideal circumstances. For some of us, that may be a container garden. For others, it could be outdoors in the actual physical garden itself. And by ideal conditions, I don't simply mean outdoors in a cold frame. What I mean is that the temperature is on par, the lighting hours is on par, your soil temp is on par. I'm talking ideal conditions. That's when the countdown begins. So if we know that, we now can determine when to start the plants based on these factors. Example one is if you were growing in a greenhouse. So you guys know I grow in a greenhouse and I don't grow in a greenhouse in the sense that I keep plants in there throughout the summer. I grow in a greenhouse in the sense that I use it to keep my seedlings in and then I move said seedlings outdoors. That example does not count because those are not the permanent spots the plant's going to sit in. So that technically is not my last frost date with my scenario. However, for some of you, you actually grow in a greenhouse for the entire year. And if this is the case, then your last frost date can start once everything is placed in the greenhouse and you're able to maintain ideal conditions. And placing the greenhouse in their permanent spots, if that means permanently in a big container or permanently in some sort of flower bed in the greenhouse. I don't care what it is, but it has to be permanent. Now, if this is your first year actually growing in the greenhouse, I would stick with just your regular seed starting schedule because you don't want the heartache of figuring out that you don't have the right heaters or it's a lot of stress on you to have to cover and do all this fancy, fancy stuff all the time. Say you do know that everything's fine and you know that ideal conditions inside of your greenhouse can be hit end of April, May, for example. Then you can use that as your starting point. That means you could technically bump everything ahead by one month. The time that we usually reference is basically June 1st, end of May, beginning of June for a number of different growers. And so if we know that our last frost date, our last frost date can be mimicked in a, a month ahead of time, we can get our plants to be started a month ahead of that. Your normal start time for a tomato could be March or April. And in this case, it could be farther along, such as February or earlier, not farther along, back in time to February. I'm gonna stress this very heavily. This includes light, number of hours and intensity of light. If you have a container or a bed and you have everything placed in said container and bed, the temperature's good, the watering's wonderful, 
but the lighting is not there, this does not count. You will end up with leggy, gross plants if you go this route. And I heavily encourage you, if you're not grow using grow lights in this situation, particularly with things like peppers and tomatoes, you just start them in the times that you're supposed to or that you normally do. So the greenhouse probably is the soonest you could actually start some of these, but what about if you are starting outdoors in a low tunnel or a cold frame of some sort or a wall of water, for example? And again, if this is your first year doing it, I don't encourage you to put all your eggs in one basket. Rather, I encourage you to experiment to see if you like it or not, because I would hate for everything to die off because you chose to do things before actually knowing how they work. If this is your first year, just don't put all your eggs in one basket. So say you're going this route. Now this route, you are limited by, for example, the fact that grow lights are gonna be very difficult to put inside of a low tunnel, a wall of water, it's not possible, or a, a cold frame of sorts. So if that's the case, we know that we are at the mercy of the lighting outdoors. Now keep in mind, you can use these devices to get plants outdoors sooner. They will go into a dormancy, they won't grow. They'll just kind of sit there and hover at whatever you planted them at until the ideal conditions are hit and then it'll take off, which is fine. But I just need you to keep that in mind if you're going this route. Don't get frustrated if everything seems to be paused, if you will. You wanna take into consideration the amount of lighting. If this is in a front facing space, if you have a white, siding or wall behind it to get more light onto the plant. If you watch this video right here, we'll talk about that a little bit. All these little factors can factor into whether or not you can push your last frost date ahead. Now, say you are simply just trying to get things in the ground sooner for whatever reason, maybe you have a wedding or a vacation around the time you normally are putting things outdoors, then you could follow the same timeline as the greenhouse folk, just Keep in mind, there's gonna be no growth there for a period of time. Or say you're wanting specifically to get them in there for the purpose of more growth, you can usually push your seed starting ahead by two weeks and that's me being conservative and really trying to make sure that you guys have a buffer. So two, three weeks, absolute max in my opinion. Some cases you can go farther with that, but that's kind of where you want to land. So in the case of the tomatoes, again, we could start them rather than the beginning of February like we would in a greenhouse setting. Maybe we start them at the end of February, which again is quite early compared to when we normally would start them March or April. The benefit to this too is that it's much easier to harden off plants that have been adapted to the outdoor conditions earlier in the year and they tend to make for a much stronger, hardier plant just overall against a number of different things. So that does increase yields in some cases. So if the idea that larger plants don't transplant well scares you, or you're simply like, no, I'm following my last frost date, there's no way I'm risking putting things out earlier, and you just simply wanna make your own garden calendar, this is what you wanna do. Let's take the tomatoes as an example, because I think these are probably the most popular one to actually start for gardeners. But you could also use, for example, like Mary Gold. It has a day on it usually as well. It may be um, full bloom days, not days to harvest. But anyways, first off, what you wanna look at is the back of the package and what it says. So if it says start indoors or sow indoors, so that means this is a plant that's applicable for that. If it says so direct outdoors, then you may want to heavily consider not starting it indoors. There's usually a reason for it, whether it's very sensitive roots, sensitivity, um, just transplant shock in general, don't transplant well at all, follow the instructions. But on the back, it's going to have a start indoors number. So let's take the tomato for an example here. And it says so indoors five to six weeks before planting, planting out. So what that translates to, just to so you guys can have a little bit of time to figure all this out, these plants 
can be started at the beginning of April if your last frost date is sometime at the beginning of June. The other thing it can mean is two weeks before that. And so that could mean sometime in March. And I actually would encourage you to start them closer to the March date if you don't have in particular, ideal soil temps or ideal ambient temps. The other reason why you we want to start them a little bit earlier is if you're itching to just start plants a little bit earlier because you wanna have some fun. And I completely understand that as well. Now, the other side of this is where it says five weeks. And this can mean anywhere from five to three weeks before putting outdoors. And that is particularly true if you choose to use a heat mat or heat the space ambiently in some way to expedite the germination time in space. And if you're able to quicken that whole process up, you actually are able to start your seeds much later and therefore transplant plants outdoors that are much more equipped to be transplanted outdoors because they're not huge in, in nature as well. And if you wanna know more on how to actually grow seeds quickly or get things to germinate fast without a heat mat and with a yogurt maker, that video right there. And this video is what Google says to watch. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.